Hi, my name is Ed, and I'm an alcoholic. That went way better than I even rehearsed it in my life. I've been sober since December 23rd, 2013. Now, that's not the first time I realized I was an alcoholic, nor was it the first time I tried to do something about it. I started drinking when I was 17. My first crack at sobriety lasted almost four years from the age of 19 to 23. I tried again at 24. This time I made a dramatic show, dumping out all the booze that I had in my backpack that I had stashed in the kitchen cabinet, in my drawers, in the trunk of my car, just in case of emergency. Because no one follows the Boy Scout motto of always be prepared, quite like an alcoholic. Over the next four years, I don't know I'd be sober for about 30 days or so, then wipe it out in a weekend of binge drinking. Now, it turns out this on-again, off-again, all-or-nothing pattern is not uncommon in people struggling with addiction. In fact, according to the National Recovery Survey, people who acquired five or more years of sobriety needed an average of five attempts before they were able to kick the habit good. It seems like relapse is part of recovery. But what I found most interesting about these numbers is that they're taken from a group of people who wanted to quit so badly that they were willing to keep trying even after the fifth failed attempt. In many cases, even after the tenth. My last temporary stint with sobriety lasted from June 4th, 2013 to December 22nd of 2013. And let me tell you something about the night of December 22nd. It is one I will never forget. If I could ever fully remember. According to witness accounts, went out, started drinking, got drunk, picked a bunch of people off, got thrown out of a bar, and wound up at a friend's house with no recollection of how I got there. The only thing I knew was that I drove. I got up the next day, went to an AA meeting, got back on the wagon, and I've been a happy rider ever since. What was different about that time that allowed me to stay sober, and how can we use it to help other people not only get sober and stay sober, but keep them from getting addicted in the first place to things like drugs, booze, food, pornography, even Pokemon? I threw that in there as a bit of comic relief, and then I started researching. It turns out that Pokemon is quite the addiction. Remember when I told you that my first day of sobriety was not first time I realized I was an alcoholic. That moment was sometime during the summer of 2011. I was living in Los Angeles as part of the All-American Heavyweight Program. This is a program that took top-level amateur heavyweight boxers and trained them with the hopes of sending one to the Olympics. It was a dream come true. They paid for my apartment. They paid for my utilities. They paid for food. They even gave me a $4,000 per month stipend. All I had to do was train and win fights. It was also my dream, too. Not just any fight. But there was one problem. I was incredibly lonely. I didn't know anyone in the city. My driver's license was suspended, so I couldn't meet anyone new in the city. And trying to build a social life in a city like Los Angeles without the ability to drive, exercise, and fertility, I was really depressed. Missed all the good times I had back home, drinking with my friends. So I had a crazy idea one day. Actually, more like a compulsion that I was fully aware of but powerless to stop. What if, right now, I start drinking by myself to recreate some of those good feelings that I got back home with my friends? Now, I'm sure this wasn't the first time that I drank with the intention of altering my mood. But it was the first time I was well aware of it that moment, I knew I was an alcoholic, but I didn't care because it worked. So here's the thing you have to understand about any addiction. They're all fundamentally driven by the dopamine reward. Now, dopamine is a neurotransmitter in our brains. It's responsible for a number of things in our bodies, but the function we're most interested in is its role in happiness and motivation. It works a little like this. Whenever you are anticipating a reward, your brain releases dopamine. Whenever you attain that reward, your brain releases even more dopamine. 
This is a way to motivate you to do more of whatever caused the initial surge of dopamine and get more of it. By drinking more, you set off the chain reaction in your brain that requires it to shut off its dopamine receptor. This means that you have to drink even more and more to feel connected, but you still feel lonely, and that drives you to drink even more. So this vicious cycle continues. This cycle is one of the reasons why it's so hard to stay sober. And it reminds me of a line from Johan Hari's epic TED talk about the opioid crisis. In that talk, he says, the opposite of connection is addiction. The dopamine reward centers are so wrecked by drugs and alcohol that it becomes impossible to feel connected to people. This problem is especially crippling if the majority of your social activities revolve around drinking, because when you give up the drinking, you tend to give up the social activity, which leaves an even bigger connection hole to be filled, which makes it more likely to feel real. So after more than 10 years of way more than the average of five attempts to stop drinking, how did I get this thing under control for good? I joined the Army like any sensible person would. Actually, I joined the Army to escape the mess that my life had become largely as a result of so much drinking. Just so happens that during your training for the Army, you're not allowed to drink. So from June of 2013 to August of 2013, I did 10 very sober weeks of basic training. Then from August to December 2013, I did 16 more very sober weeks of advanced individual training, or AIT. I always tell people that Basic training is like prison without violence, and AIT is like college without the boot. So for 26 weeks, I had sobriety forced upon me. But it was different this time. Not just because I was physically unable to drink, though that helped, but because I was meeting new people, gaining new skills, and building a new identity without alcohol in the background. It was the first time in my adult life that I was able to define myself positively and independently of boot. Now we know how important identity is in resisting and recovering from any addiction. Dr. Hannah Pickard, a professor of philosophy and bioethics, has this a thought exercise. We're gonna run through it quickly, it'll only take a second. I want you to imagine that you're an addict. If you've never been one or difficult, I'll help. Take your worst junk food craving and 10x that craving. You now crave this snack so much that you're willing to steal, sell your possessions, and take ridiculously dangerous risks just to get some more of it. And all your friends, the people you spend the most time around, they're also consumers of the snack. While they may not be outright addicts, they certainly don't criticize your consumption. Now, if that was difficult for you, you have to realize something. It turns out the opposite is true. It's very hard for an addict to imagine not being an addict. Dr. Pickard sums this up in tragic clarity. You can't see yourself on the other side of the road from addiction to recovery, then a drug-free life represents an existential crisis. For if you're not a drug addict, then what are you? After that last time I fell off the wagon, I immediately filled my life with activities that not only kept me away from my old environment, but allowed me to continue building this new identity and making new connections with people who didn't know me as a heavy drinker. Or if they did, they wanted to see me change. Now, I'm not saying that if someone has an addiction, that the only reason for it is because they're lonely or they don't know who they are. But given everything that we've learned from neurolog neurological studies, epidemiological research, and anecdotal accounts, then we know these play a significant role. And I'm not saying that the best way to deal with an addiction is to join the Army. That just so happened to be my path to discovering how important identity was in making big changes in your life. So you or someone you know is struggling with addiction, just remember that it's not just because you're lonely and it's not just because they don't know who they are. Those are really good places to start directing your energy when it comes to solving this problem. 
by doing so, you may not just change a life, but also save one as well.